Hi, I'm Matthew McLean. I'm the creative lead at Free Studios and the editor of Freeze Week magazine. And this is Art Live, reporting from Freeze Los Angeles 2023. So Los Angeles is a city where everything is on the move and the art scene is equally dynamic with emerging spaces, independent spaces popping up all across the city, as well as mid-range and blue chip galleries opening uh, new spaces and locations all the time. And Freeze Los Angeles too has found a new home at the Santa Monica Airport. We're going to head there in a bit, but this is really an occasion to explore some of the cultural heritage of the city's west side. And that includes sites like this, the amazing Villa Aurora in Pacific Palisades. During Freeze Week, this is home to an installation of works by the LA-based artist Kelly Akashi. Kelly's engaging the history of the house, the fact that in the 1940s it became the home of the esteemed German novelist Leon Furchtwängler and his wife Marta, who were fleeing fascism in Europe and landed in LA. In contrast to the Furchtwänglers who kind of found the safe haven in Los Angeles, Kelly's works here reference the parallel history of Japanese Americans interned by the government in camps like Poston in Arizona. This is part of the programme Against the Edge, created by J. Ezra Nassam for Freeze Projects, um, which is installed in historic sites across this part of the city, and all of them kind of explore this idea of the fragility or the faultiness of home. It's so amazing here, we could spend here all day, but I think we have to head off towards the fair. We're on our way to the fair, but I couldn't resist stopping here on this kind of unassuming residential street, which is home to the Gary Residence, a 1978 work by the world-famous architect Frank Gary. Some of his most iconic buildings, like the Walt Disney Concert Hall, are here in LA. He's also famous for buildings like the Guggenheim Bilbao, which totally transformed public understanding of what architecture and what museums could really be. But some of Gary's most important works are actually in the domestic sphere. This was his family home, and he preserved the core, which is this Dutch colonial style building, and kind of wrapped it with this extraordinary assemblage of corrugated iron, timber, mesh link fencing, signature aspects of Gary's practice, inspired by spending his Saturday mornings in his grandfather's hardware store. But you can also see in this kind of cubist explosion of angles and space kind of coming apart and disjunctive planes, the beginnings of the kind of curving extraordinary forms that you see in buildings like the Concert Hall or the Guggenheim Bilbao. <laughs> So we're here, Freeze Los Angeles 2023 at Santa Monica Airport. There are 120 galleries from 22 countries over two sites and Freeze projects which are bringing the whole space to life. And one of them is happening behind me right now. Performance organized by the artist Artu Autumn Brion. She's looked at the nearby community of um, Bay Street Beach, which is historically really significant for the black community of Los Angeles. And with the performance, it's really about reclaiming space for black life and for black joy. My name is Kibam Kim. My business partner, Young Chung, started the space at his apartment. He still lives on Commonwealth and Council. That's where the name comes from. We work with a lot of femme artists, queer artists, POC artists, exploring issues of body politics and how they navigate the contemporary world today. Since the mid-90s, Kerry has exclusively made these paintings using reflective uh, polyester film and resin. Having gone through the unspeakable loss of the AIDS epidemic, Carrie thought words and images are failing us. So she makes these works that kind of have a perpetual provisional quality. So obviously you and Jung are of Korean heritage and like several artists in the program are part of the Korean diaspora. And I just wondered if you could speak from that perspective about what this moment of visibility for Korean art and culture kind of means to you. I grew up in the 80s in Korea when we really still felt like it was like a developing country. Um, and to be able to um, showcase this kind of like thriving um, culture it's been tremendously gratifying and um, pride-inducing for us. What is your number one best Korean barbecue spot in Los Angeles? Soban, S-O-B-A-N. Okay. The cast and crew of Parasite, after they won the Oscar, went there and celebrated all night. Amazing. These are all pretty recent works. Can you tell me about the, this kind of body of work and what you've been thinking about? You know, I use a figure more as a means to just start a painting, much more about the abstraction of making the painting and yet obviously in the end the image and the figure are always there so this show since it's made from the end of last year until you know last week kind of the pressure cooking of the last second. Which did you finish last week? This painting over here, Rocky Bottom, had some changes on it the day the shippers came to pick it up. And just tell me really quickly about like the decision of the shaped canvas. I've always kind of been curious about working with an arch and like one of my favorite painters is Piero della Francesca, so the baptism of Christ in London. The house I live in is a Spanish style house in California and it's got several arches and I love living with them. I realize how nice it is to have roundness in your house. I just finally realized I should 
then I draw up a schematic and have them build that. I'm always looking for something to throw into yeah, the yeah. mix to kind of complicate it, because yeah. it inherently creates new solutions that then start to work their way through everything else. Los Angeles is a really house proud city. I think people's homes here mean everything to them. And that's one of the reasons why there's this really deep appreciation in Los Angeles for um, and connoisseurship of, of design, of craft, of furniture. And you can see this reflected in the solo presentation of White City of Jeffrey Deitch by Peter Shire. You can really see in this presentation all of the different facets of Peter's practice, from handmade ceramics, like the coffee cups in the corner, all these ceramic elements on these extraordinary welded metal sculptures, and then the very functional, almost kind of domestic works like this, which looks like a beautiful sculpture, but is actually a chair. And it's pretty comfy. So hi Nicola, can you tell me how did you encounter the work of Ming Smith and what was the journey to working together? Interestingly, my first engagement with Ming was on the dance floor. We met at uh, an Ailey dance class uh, of Afro-Cuban dance and I hadn't really made the connection at that point. I was just always astonished by this very beautiful creature moving across the floor. But it was only a couple of years later that I met her properly and understood who she was. Lots of people are sort of seeing Ming's work maybe for the first time, because sure. just having this really visible moment. Could you talk about sort of some of her recent activities? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been a very exciting time for Ming. Uh, a wonderful show just opened at the Museum of Modern Art, an exhibition organized by Thelma Golden of the Studio Museum in Harlem, in conjunction with the Museum of Modern Art. And it's not a retrospective, it's, it's simply a kind of view into Ming's uh, amazing capability and talent and, and her mastery of the medium of photography that has until this moment not been fully understood or appreciated. The picture of Alicia Keys is a wonderful rendition of her blurring technique, shifting from a kind of wavelength to a physical property, to a mist, to you know something palpable and weighty. Thank you so much for this oh, tour. I feel like I've welcome. been to a whole museum show. Oh, so. Great. So we're here in the Deutsche Bank Wealth Management Lounge, where the display is all dedicated to the Deutsche Bank Freeze Los Angeles Film Award, which is an initiative now in its fourth year. Claudio de Sanctis, what did you think of the films this year? There were nine gems, and it's interesting because it's the fourth year I'm a juror, and I'm very proud of being a juror. I tell all my friends and I tell my parents that despite being a banker, I became, I, I realized one of my childhood dreams, which is to be a juror at a film festival. And tell me about your personal love of cinema, because I know this has been like a passion since you are a pretty since, young guy. Since I was a kid, yeah. I mean, I, I always say that I used to get up in the middle of the night to watch the Oscars. I, I, I love cinema. is my mom's passion. She was a journalist uh, taking care, you know, covering uh, the, the cinema world. Cinema is in my blood. I, I believe cinema is ultimately the most, uh, one of the most modern ways of expressing art, is art in itself. And something that's really unique, I think, about the Deutsche Bank Free Los Angeles Film Award is that it's really supporting storytellers at the very beginning of their career, really emerging figures. So first of all, there's a fundamental issue with cinema on mainstream cinema. It's getting very standardized. And if you standardize it that way, you take away the artistic component, which is that of allowing, you know, original voices to give you a different view of the world. If you add to that the complexity of minorities that don't have the same access to the same voice, this, this award is crucial because it gives them an absolutely wide canvas. It takes minority voices and leaves them full freedom to express themselves and then gives them a stage to show what they're, to showcase what they're doing. So I think it's a, a fantastic initiative and it fits very much in our ambition as a bank to be part of the community, to help the community, not just in financial ways, but also in ways that allow the community to grow together with more voices and plural voices. Well, I'm going to rewatch all of the films online on Freeze.com tonight, and I'll see you at the ceremony. Fantastic, looking forward to it. So it was funny talking to Claudio earlier about his love of cinema, because here in Los Angeles, the movies just feel ever present. Um, so earlier this morning at the fair, Hollywood royalty like Gwyneth Paltrow was here, I saw checking out the works at Herald Street and chatting to Alex Lobstel from Listen Gallery. But I was thinking about cinema particularly because of these works behind me by the photographer Nan Golden here at the stand of Marion Goodman Gallery. And Nan was actually the um, subject and co-producer of the recent movie All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, which won the Golden Lion at the last Venice Film Festival. Um, it tells the story of her life and her work and also her activism recently in the opioid crisis. And it's interesting thinking about Nan's work in relation to cinema because in these works, She's actually assembled different photographs from periods of her oob and kind of assembled them within the frame, almost a little bit like a storyboard or kind of working a little bit like a film editor might. So these different moments kind of unfold a narrative. 
So the fair this year is taking place across two sites, temporary structure in the east site and the west site, which is here, the Barker hangar, obviously a former aircraft hangar. And the galleries in this um, section are kind of divided into two sort of specialisms. There's a, a kind of focus on art of the 20th century, which ranges from like prints by Matisse to works by Rouché, to this, which is the focus section, which is dedicated specially to young galleries from um, many in Los Angeles, but also across the USA. Um, it's created by Amanda Hunt and Sonia Tamadon, and it's a chance really to get almost a sort of a cross-section, a survey of what emerging artists in the US are focused on at the moment. What are they focused on at the moment? I would say ceramics. A lot of work that involve engaging with kind of material and texto, whether that's ceramic, glass, fabric, a lot of photography, and as ever, a lot of painting. Um, and what are the paintings of? They're paintings of people, of places, of memories, um, particularly from artists from uh, minority backgrounds expressing their very particular experience of life in the US at this time. There's something very kind of dreamy and soft about a lot of painting you see at the moment. It's almost this kind of escape from the reality of life. And I think that speaks to, I guess, the sense of the ongoing difficulty of staying alive at this moment in time. So as well as the kind of blue chip art by household names that you find here in the kind of 20th century section of the fair, um, there's also a chance to make discoveries. One discovery I've made this week I'm really excited about is the work of this artist James Luna, an artist completely new to me, um, has a solo presentation here with Garth Green and Gallery, um, and he's an indigenous artist of the Luis Seno people, um, based on the La Jolla Reservation, not far from Los Angeles. And I really love this work that engages the kind of classic iconography of Americana from the beer can to the TV set to the media still, but with a twist on it that really explores the indigenous experience. Hi, Wendy. So tell me, what does a day, mm -hmm. opening day of an art fair look like for an art consultant like yourself? What's your day been like? So it's very stressful <laughs> because I have uh, a client with me and we have, you know, work that we're interested in and we have to kind of be strategic and go immediately to the stand that we have work on hold and look at it and make a decision, sort of game time decision. And what happens at that moment when you and the client stand in front of the work for the first time? Like, what is it that they're looking for or registering that they're not seeing on a PDF? You know, it's so. different for every client, but the client that I was with today, they're very visceral. You know, they have a very visceral reaction to work in person and they don't like to buy from a PDF. They did not buy it in advance. They took the risk of losing it and showing up and seeing it in person. But we want a gut punch. With these, with these clients, I'm like a chameleon. I take on their persona. So if, if, if the gut punch is what we want, then I want to feel it and they want to feel it. It's like a team win, you know, when that happens. In terms of as you go around, are there trends, developments that you see in terms of what artists are making and galleries are showing? Yeah, well, I would say that one trend that's been a trend for a while has been ceramics. That has definitely kind of been an area of interest for me and um, a number of those artists happen to be from California. So I loved at this fair being able to go to the Barker Hangar and see a piece by Ken Price, you know, that's like an 80s gorgeous sort of biomorphic sculpture and then turn around and see like historical material here that Matthew Marks is showing from the 70s plus the drawings like people don't realize Ken Price made incredible works on paper so that kind of cross-platform um, looking is very helpful for me because I take an art historical approach with clients and so to be able to make those connections is really gratifying. Enjoy. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well the Institute is in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is Pacific facing, it's a very creative place, and we got lucky. We found it the most beautiful site. It is above the Getty Museum in the Santa Monica Mountains. It has incredible vistas. It's um, almost like a blank canvas, but a canvas that's in the air. And um, we can create what we call a sort of a secular modern day monastery. And I see it living here, more and more artists are moving to L.A. And L.A. is a place of freedom and creativity. And I think artists feel it and they express it. And um, I mean, I couldn't think of a more ex extraordinary place to bring people together. Could you tell me a little bit about your upbringing with art and how you kind of found your own path? Early on, I started looking at art. I visited beautiful towns in Italy churches, museums, uh, I mean, art is everywhere in Italy. You could argue, is art just for show or to be shared, or is it really a way for people to realize themselves? I think it reflects a deep human need to just 
express yourself. I mean, every one of us is, or could be, to some extent, an artist. Obviously, as an investor, you have to be extremely well informed about the world of today. You have to have a sense of what's happening in the world of tomorrow. Does looking at art, spending time with art, thinking about art, help you understand the world in that sense? Well, everything is connected, for sure. Uh, and art is just a reflection of life in some ways. And it reflects the fact that life, and let's call it the, the life of commerce, is everywhere and very vibrant, and everything is uh, intertwined for good and for bad. I know you want to get chocolates, so should we go and find chocolates in the lounge? Chocolates, yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate so it. So I'm ending my day here with the playing fields, just adjacent to the Freeze entrance, which is the site of another Freeze project. The artist Alake Schilling has created these custom sock and balls with this really cute pink figure who's also in the inflatable installed behind it. And it's really just an invitation to play. Listeners can uh, have a kick around with these. Members of LAFC are doing a scrimmage. I'm going to go and get involved, so I'm going to say uh, thank you very much for joining us for Art Live, and I'll see you next time. Not the most elegant move ever.